Drivers, start your engines as we are going to get into week four, Division One and Division Two Rocket League play. First on the Division One side, we have Gateway versus Penn Trafford. Pop Puke flying down, getting in position to play some D. Not if Rye has anything to say about it. Coming in hot. No, thank you. Boom, bang. Joeler hits it. Here's another play from Stone. Hitting it off the wall, trying to reverse field. Flying around with their teammates. Balls in the air. Big save. Epic save. Bang. Another miss. But if you can't control the rebound, it's going to go in eventually. A big goal. Gateway's going to take it three to nothing in the best of three series. And as you can see, Pop Puke and Joeler and Stone had an overall marvelous performance to lead their team to victory. On a Division One side, we have Carmichael's versus California. Balls in the air, get it in front of the net. Good things will happen, but with a save like that, it wasn't enough because they came flying in out of nowhere for the goal. California's gonna take it three to nothing, and they're gonna remain undefeated after that performance. On the division one side, we have Penn Trafford and the Greater El Tuna CTC Goats. It's a close game in game one of the best of five. Mordekin men in the air. Doing some nasty stuff. Put it in the goal for me. Bang! What a score. Greater Altoona CTC will take the best of five. Three to nothing over Penn Trafford. Over on the Division Two side. Gateway versus Shade Central. Here we see Pop Puke playing in the air. The ball's flying all over the place. But that's an open goal. Big stop, but it's not enough. It goes in anyway for DC Racer. Here we're looking at a play going down the pitch. Trying to reverse the field. Send it the other way. Long, long, no way it goes in. It does! Bang from Pop Puke. Gateway's gonna take the best of fives. Three to nothing. And what a performance from Pop Puke and Mason. I don't care. Leading their team to victory. Rounding out Division II play is Richland High School and Forest Hills. Balls in the air. Can Nate May track it down? Maybe. Potentially. Uh-oh. Ball in front of the net. Never good. Out of nowhere. Pup game and bang. What a score. Forest Hills is up 2 to nothing off the faceoff. Pup Gaming with another good face-off win. Coming out of nowhere, just putting it in and putting them in themselves. Unbelievable. As Forest Hills will take the best of five, three to nothing. And Pup Gaming with an absolute domination with 916 points. Looking at our standings for Division I and Division II Rocket League play. Over on the Division I side, Forest Hills and California are in a stalemate at first for 4-0. Greater El Tuna CTC at 3-0. Gateway and Shade sitting at 2-1. Penn Trafford sitting at 2-2. Carmichael's in Richland at 1-3. Uniontown at 0-1. Bishop Guilfoyle at 0-2. And Winburn and Westmont at 0-3. 
over on the Division II side. We have Gateway and Laurel Highlands tied for first at 3-0. Greater Altoona, CTC, Holidaysburg, Uniontown all sitting at 2-0. Forest Hills at 2-1. Penn Trafford at 1-1. California at 1-2. Westmont Hilltop at 0-2. Bishop Guilfoyle at 0-2. Shade at 0-3. And Richland rounding us out at 0-4. For our week five schedule for division one and division two racket league clay over on the division one side we have westmont hilltop versus carmichael's union town versus the gateway gators bishop guilfoyle versus winber the greater altoona ctc goats versus forest hills over on division two side we have bishop guilfoyle versus richland holdisburg versus Penn trafford shade versus laurel highlands and California versus Westmont Hilltop.
start your engines as we are going to get into week four, Division One and Division Two Rocket League play. First on the Division One side, we have Gateway versus Penn Trafford. Pop Puke flying down, getting in position to play some D. Not if Fry has anything to say about it. Coming in hot. No, thank you. Boom, bang. Joller hits it. Here's another play from Stone. Hitting it off the wall, trying to reverse field. Flying around with their teammates. Balls in the air. Big save. Epic save. Bang. Another miss. But if you can't control the rebound, it's going to go in eventually. A big goal. Gateway's going to take it three to nothing in the best of three series. And as you can see, Pop Puke and Joeller and Stone had an overall marvelous performance to lead their team to victory. On the Division I side, we have Carmichael's versus California. Balls in the air, get it in front of the net. Good things will happen, but with a save like that, it wasn't enough because they came flying in out of nowhere for the goal. California's gonna take it three to nothing, and they're gonna remain undefeated after that performance. On the Division I side, we have Penn Trafford and the Greater Altoona CTC Goats. It's a close game in game one of the best of five. Mordekin men in the air doing some nasty stuff. Put it in the goal for me. Bang! What a score! Greater Altoona CTC will take the best of five. Three to nothing over Penn Trafford. Over on the Division II side, Gateway versus Shade Central. Here we see Pop Puke playing in the air. The ball's flying all over the place. But that's an open goal. Big stop, but it's not enough. It goes in anyway for DC Racer. Here we're looking at a play going down the pitch. Trying to reverse the field. Send it the other way. Long, long, no way it goes in. It does! Bang from Pop Puke. Gateway's gonna take the best of fives, three to nothing. And what a performance from Pop Puke and Mason, I don't care, leading their team to victory. Rounding out division two play is Richland High School and Forest Hills. Ball's in the air, can Nate May track it down? Maybe, potentially. Uh-oh, ball in front of the net, never good, out of nowhere, pup game and bang. What a score. Forest Hills is up two to nothing off the faceoff. Pop Gaming with another good face-off win. Coming out of nowhere, just putting it in and putting them in themselves. Unbelievable. As Forest Hills will take the best of five, three to nothing. And Pop Gaming with an absolute domination with 916 points. Looking at our standings for Division I and Division II Rocket League play. Over on the Division I side, Forest Hills and California are in a stalemate at first for 4-0. Greater Altoona CTC at 3-0. Gateway and Shade sitting at 2-1. Penn Trafford sitting at 2-2. Carmichael's in Richland at 1-3. Uniontown at 0-1. Bishop Guilfoyle at 0-2. And Winburn and Westmont at 0-3. Over on the Division II side, we have Gateway and Laurel Highlands tied for first at 3-0. Greater Altoona CTC, Holidaysburg, Uniontown all sitting at 2-0. Forest Hills at two and one. Penn Trafford at one and one. California at one and two. Westmont Hilltop at 0 and two. Bishop Guilfoyle at 0 and two. Shade at 0 and three. And Richland rounding us out at 0 and four. For our week five schedule for Division One and Division Two Racket League play. Over on the Division One side, we have Westmont Hilltop versus Carmichael's. Union Town versus the Gateway Gators. Bishop Guilfoyle versus Winber. The Greater Altoona CTC Goats versus Forest Hills. Over on Division II side, we have Bishop Guilfoyle versus Richland, Holdisburg versus Penn Trafford, Shade versus Laurel Highlands, and California versus Westmont Hilltop. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to week number four of the Tech High School series. My name is Slater, and with me in the casting booth is the legendary Happiness. Happy! We got some car on ball action tonight. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm all so flattered by that compliment. Thank you very much. But, yeah, of course, so excited to be here for the cars and the balls and all the things in between as TEC has come through with another set of three bangers. Unfortunately, we did not get the first matchup tonight because one of the teams had to forfeit due to lack of availability. But you know what? 
That's just what happens sometimes. You can't always be fully available. So we will get into the second matchup of the night all the same. And that is going to be Forest Hill. Or no, it's going to be Udentown versus Gateway up for our technically second game of the day, but our first streamed game of the day due to, unfortunately, Westmont and Carmichael's not playing. So Uniontown and Gateway is going to be what we start off with for the day. And I'm pretty excited for this one. It looks like a good matchup on paper. Oh, absolutely. It's going to be a lot of fun. Let's have a quick look at the stats as to where these teams stand on the Division 1 leaderboard. Uniontown, they are standing at mm. number 8 right now with only one loss under their belt, looking for their very first win in a gateway. They're sitting at the third position on the leaderboard here, and they got 2-1, two to one, two wins under their belt. Mm. So this is, this is a mm. bit of a tough game here for Uniontown. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. But at the same exact time, they've only played one game. And so, I mean, considering the teams that game could have been against, it could have been against anybody from the 1-3 and three Richland and Carmichael's, or it could have been against the 4-0 and oh Forest Hills. So you're looking at a wide spectrum of teams and only getting one game with such a small sample size. That's the reason I'm so excited for this matchup, because we really get to see more of Uniontown that we haven't seen yet all season. Meanwhile, mm -hmm. it's been, you know, a really long season for Gateway comparatively, as they are already three games in. Two and one, they're doing a pretty good job, so they definitely come into it with the favorites, but not necessarily by a long shot because of how small that Uniontown sample size has been. So I'm hopeful that we'll see a pretty close and even series with good showings from both sides. It's going to be a lot of fun. A best of five series, happy. A plenty of time for Uniontown to adapt to Gateway's play style, and possibly mm -hmm. we might just see a very close game. Ooh, that would be interesting as I just think we're ready to get into the lobby as we're hopping in between Union Town and Gateway for game number one of the day. And it's underway with TEC. Kickoff goes well for Gateway at the start. And they're actually looking to score off the back of it, but not quite able to sneak it through. And so a quick save as we move on to the first game. Still scoreless this early on. 20 seconds into this one, just a lot of ping pong between both these two teams and you know Uniontown coming into this, they want as much time here on the midfield as they possibly can, right, just waiting oh, yeah. to get chances for themselves to go, to go to the offensive side here and secure shots for them, let's find out if they can pull it off though, we got Popuke putting it onto the backboard, maybe a pass opportunity coming in for Gateway, the second man goes flying by and oh, that would be Uniontown once again. Now on the defense, mm. react to that. I love that name, by the way. <laughs> yeah, and I, I think it's a fitting name as well because Reacted Egg has got pretty solid reaction time. I mean, more so than many other teams I've seen at the TEC level. This defensive side already looking a lot stronger than many others that you'll see. Getting very over aggressive in a lot of cases because, well, you know, oh, we want that offense. But they're already prepared to turn back around and play the defense when they have to. But they're a little shaky at the moment. A couple misses in front of the line nearly exposed them but UHS Octane able to get that away and so they will remain alive however hasn't been much offense yet for Uniontown as they are still trying their very best but can't quite hold on at the moment to any real possession well we got two, we're two minutes into this game happy and this is a still a, an 0-0 game just Mm -hmm. Pretty good coming in from Uniontown, oh, yeah. considering they were at a bit of a disadvantage while we were looking at the late leaderboards. But you love to mm -hmm. see this kind of action coming in Ooh. from blue side. Well, there was an opportunity to get them going with that very first goal, but nothing yet. Kilo goes up high into the air, a double touch opportunity mm -hmm. missed away. That is Gateway's ball to take away. And that they will do. Still gonna peak. Preparing on these shots as Uniontown, almost able to sneak one through again, but good defense from Gateway will remain us at a 0-0 as we're closing in on halfway through this first game. Nice possession in the air from Kilo, but runs out of boost, doesn't have enough to get all the way through, and so Sergeant Cooligan takes it off his hands, and now Lost is pushing it all the way into the other side, but doesn't have the angle to get it closer to the net, so Octane with a big booming clear is going to send it back to the other side. Now defense is imperative on Pop Puke, and he's not able to get it, but Lost is back in time, so... It's back and forth with shooting opportunities both sides, but nobody quite able to corral it enough to really put one on. But there it is, Reacted Egg able to get the first goal of the game as Uniontown able to take a lead early on over the favorites gateway, like you said. This is what we wanted, right, Happy? 
You're oh, always yeah. in for the upsets, or well, the alleged upsets as to what we believed <laughs> as we were getting into this game. Two minutes into this one, Union Town's coming out strong and they are half the lead here in game number one. Let's find out if Gateway can make a quick response, though I believe Ooh. they can. It's Papu going into this one with a great pass from what are you doing lost. And that is the tie up of game one. That's definitely the better, at least more mechanically impressive and uh, communicationally impressive goal that we've seen of the two. It was a solid shot in the first goal that we saw out of Uniontown, but that last one, just really solid play off the back wall. Good job reading it as well, and Potpuke able to put that away on his second shot of the game. Second shot along with Lost able to get two shots. No shots on goal yet for Sergeant Cooligan, but they are still out shooting it their opponents by one shot, but never mind, as Octane is able to put another shot on and actually put another shot in. Good pass from Reacted Egg with the assist off the sidewall. Gets Pop Puke to go for it and forces the miss as well. And Puke barely not able to get that save as he's able to make contact, but not able to keep it away. And Uniontown takes the lead back once more, but it's only by one. And last time we saw a one goal lead, it wasn't too soon, or it wasn't too long before it was gone. Yeah, Uniontown, you know, they're trying to keep up with this one. Of course, a second goal coming in from Uniontown would mean a lot better since that would be the insurance they would be, that they would need in order to secure this game here. But Gateway, right now they're in possession and they might just be looking to secure a goal here. Kilo comes in with a huge save, though. What are you doing lost now? Brings it onto the backboard. Okay. <laughs> it's the nose of the car and it's in a bit of an accident there. Shot coming in from Popuke. Oh, it hits the post and he hits the car as well. But the ball Ooh. still nowhere near. Back of the net, that, um, back of the net. That was a near miss, though. Fortunate mm -hmm. for Gateway to not get that one in. Popu, a bit of an opportunity to scale the shot on target. Pops it up high, takes it on to the net. And that is Gateway tying it up once again. Very fortunate the Gateway were able to tie things back up here. They had a couple of opportunities that just went wide, just went too high, just went off to the side, or just weren't quite shot as efficiently as they could have been. And finally, they're able to make something work in terms of getting a shot on net and getting the shot all the way through. Not denied by the defense. However, Kilo, looking to deny them this lead for much longer, takes it into the air. Can't quite score it. Reacted Egg able to send it forward, but he leaves it off the crossbar, and that's not going to be enough to get it all the way through. The bounce down is not kind, and Uniontown will not be able to keep this lead, or rather take it back, as they just can't keep the lead at all. Whenever they take it, it's taken right back, but that is still a good pattern for them, because that means that if we end up in overtime, they should be the ones to win it. But by the time we get there, it's kind of just all bets are off. And 30 seconds from reaching that OT as an actual reality with Reacted Ed looking to change things. Oh not able to do it though. He almost made a very comf a very uncomfortable gateway to get that save. Oh, that ooh, is ooh. more than uncomfortable. But they still managed to get away with it. What are you doing lost here on the midfield? They're going to pick this one up. Octane is going to pass it off the sidewall. Dangerous situation here. For Uniontown, however, Gateway hits it a little too wide, and that might just be overtime. Oh, Abby, that is one <laughs> way to start off the day. Oh, yeah, and I mean, we came into this, at least I did, thinking it's going to be particularly interesting because Uniontown haven't quite gotten enough of a test yet to really see how good they are. I mean, plenty of great teams lose their week one matchups, and Uniontown seemingly coming alive in week number two is Reacted Egg sends that to the middle. Kilo gets a an odd touch on it, not quite sure how he was able to hit it like that at that angle, but regardless of how it happened, it happened, and it's moving forward for Uniontown. Cooligan up in the air to try and send it out. Kilo is there, but he's still playing it backwards. Let's react it, go for it first, and now it's up in the air. So Kilo's gonna be next on it, but he goes a little too early or late, depending on how you look at it. And now it's all of a sudden a threat on their own net, but reacted egg able to deal with that well. And so Uniontown have not lost. They hold strong on the defense. Looking for their next opportunity to put one in the gateway net. Happy, what are we thinking? Who's going to take this game one here? Mm -hmm. I mean, whoever takes game one, they're going to head into second game with a monumental mm -hmm. amount oh, yeah. of confidence behind their belts. <laughs> so this is going to be a pretty crucial game one. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And I think personally, I'd, I, it's hard to tell, but I think there have definitely been more opportunities for Uniontown as of late. So definitely going to favor them for the moment, but don't want to say anything for sure because... You know, the caster curse is deadly, and I would hate to... Oh, no. Oh, my God. Oh, my. You're kidding. You're kidding. It is deadly, huh? No. I'm so sorry. 
Union Town, I'm so sorry. There's no way. The tragic own goal, as soon as I said that it was gonna... As soon as that happened. Oh, the most unfortunate own goals for Union Town, and that means Gateway, are able to take game number one. An impressive performance, to be sure, is Popchuk able to put away three of them. Actually, I'm not... It wasn't an own goal, was it? it or was it? I forget now, because I can't remember. But I, I'm fairly certain it was. Wasn't it, Flader? Yeah, it's, it was. Uh, okay. I'm, my <laughs> brain is playing tricks on me now. But Pop Puke with three goals. So that's definitely a solid performance from them. So, I mean, that's something. But wow, how tragic of an ending that is. And whatever role I played in that, I am very sorry. <laughs> It was a great game, though. Union Town coming into this one, React oh, yeah. Egg, he was he was up there with five hundred and fifty-five points mm -hmm. under his spell. Kilo came in with three hundred eight, and UHS Octane. Even the, even if he scored that own goal, he was there. <laughs> he was up there with two hundred twelve points with a goal of his oh, yeah. own as well. So mm -hmm. Union Town played phenomenally well here in game one. Let's hope that in the next game they can do that without scoring own goals. Yeah, I mean, that would be the dream, wouldn't it? I, I do think that they will at least be able to take one game through this series. They played incredibly well across their whole team. And a lot of the times you'll see that consistent, solid team play being what helps a lot. Pop-off efforts from players like Pop are going to help a ton. But when you are really the only person on your team who's been a consistent threat, if that is what we continue to see, yes, I would also love it if Pop's teammates continued to have some good performances along with Pop Puke and really made it, mm. you know, really just made their own talents pop, if you will. But still, it, it based on game one, it looks a little more convincing for Uniontown at the moment compared mm. to Gateway, just because they had so much deadliness across their entire lineup with everyone contributing for goals, for assists, for saves. And I really like what I saw from them in that last game, even if it did end so unfortunately. Yeah, it was a bit of an unfortunate end, but you know, going into this one, hopefully we'll see a better Union Town in action. They were great, but mm -hmm. they just need that little push to go that extra mile. And Abby, what are we wondering? Mm -hmm. Do we do we see a Union Town going into this one with a bit of? bit of a conference reset or like what, what's the mindset here for you um Town? definitely um who uh it was octane who scored that on goal was it not it was mm -hmm. so i think definitely for octane he uh i'm expecting them to probably be at least a little bit more reserved definitely more careful probably being more of a defensive player just out of being so worried to repeat a mistake that they had just made in the previous game however um same exact time I don't think it'll apply to the whole team just because, you know, your teammate makes a mistake like that. You're like, oh, that's unfortunate. What can we do? But I didn't really t do too much to be not necessarily that, you know, you're blaming your teammates, but just that it's not going to cause too much of a difference in how you play because you did a pretty good job the whole way through. And Octane did as well. I just feel like that mistake is really going to stick with them and impact them as the series goes on. So I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a more passive UHS Octane through the rest of the series. However, I'm still expecting the same kind of Union Town we've been seeing. How about you, Flader, though? How do you think it'll impact? Or could it possibly impact Gateway as well? You know, Gateway, uh, they do feel like the imposter here. Sorry, I use that one. But uh, managed to take game, managed to, managing to take game one doesn't give them as much confidence as it usually would because they were not the ones taking the winning, winning goal. It was a bit of an own goal. So going into this one, they are mm -hmm. going to be treading carefully going up against a team like Union Town. Yeah, and that's what you've got to do. But speaking of going up against a team like Uniontown, we will see game number two begin between these two Titans, if you will. Definitely look to the part in game number one. And I don't want to say Titans because they don't necessarily reflect it on the scoreboard, but they both looked really strong and also of similar power levels through that first matchup, if you will. As Cooligan already looking to put that one on with some power, but it's not going to work out. And Uniontown, again, start things off on the defensive end. But that's a good start to the game for UHS Octane. Able to get a save real quick just to make sure, you know, you let yourself know, hey, I do have it in me to make those saves. I'm not just going to own goal every time I get put in a position like that. Slowly build that confidence back up for UHS. But it's almost been torn back down by that shot from Pop Puke. Fortunately, though, it'll go back out. And we remain at a 0-0 scoreline. 
Only zero zero, but it is Gateway applying tons and tons of pressure here in Union Town's half. Finally able to make a break for it. Reacted egg. Now UHS Octane passed back here. No boost to work with, so cannot flip off the wall here. Bit of a back touch coming in from Gateway. Continue to main, maintain possession off of that demo as well. It's Papuk on the ball here to contest it immediately. The ball just bouncing around in the midfield here. Not really making a lot of threatening shots as we just see clears coming in all the way through. I really like the distancing that I'm seeing from Gateway at the moment. They're not really cutting each other off in rotation. It's very clear who's going for what ball and then who's up next in turn. And as I say that, it is a little bit of a rotation cut from Lost unless it throws off Cooligan into the process. And that could be an opportunity going the other way, but Uniontown not able to score it. But I, other than that most recent play, I do like the sort of level of order that I've seen from them, but the order doesn't matter when everybody's getting bumped out of the way. And a huge impactful play from none other than Octane running through two of them and leaving only one player back to make the defensive stand. And although Pop Puke was close, not close enough to get that save, it'll be a 1 0 lead for Union Town for the second game in a row. They strike that first blood. Yeah, not to mention a reacted egg being in the perfect position to re re receive that pass. Massage and cooling and hold on a minute. He is looking for a quick response here. Pop Puke. Does come in with a demo, so that's going to give a lot of space here to Union Town to make that second goal happen. That's a pretty good pass down center, but the third man is a little too wide. It's a shot back onto the blue side here. Going to be picked up by Popuke once again, contested immediately. And with half the game remaining, Gateway, rather Union Town, continue to maintain that one goal lead. That they do, and actually scoring earlier than they did last game. Last game we got to about halfway through before we really saw any action in terms of the scoreboard, and this time around we're seeing some a lot more quickly. Kilo looking to make it more, gets by Lost, but not able to get by anybody else, and Reacted Egg isn't going to be able to re react fast enough as Sergeant Cooligan sends it by the whole defense, and Kilo overextends Octane was chasing, I think, the mid-boost or something, not sure, and Reacted Egg far too far up to make up for that mistake. And a 1-1 score line we now find ourselves at is UHS caught way too far forward. All three members of UHS caught way too far forward and they get punished as a result. Man, is it just me or Sergeant Coogan could be the name of a police horse? <laughs> I, I actually, have you said that before or, or no? I feel like I've heard somebody make a horse name reference in a cast <laughs> lately and I can't tell if it was you or because I, I remember I've cast Sergeant Cooligan before, but I like that name for a for a police horse. I'm not going to lie. That's a good, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a good one. Absolutely. Love to see the kind of creativity these high schoolers bring on to the field here. But <laughs> two minutes remaining into this one. Ooh. Oh, and it's Sergeant Cooligan, the man of the hour, taking a one goal lead for Gateway. Mm, they're trying to keep Sergeant Cooligan out, but he just says nay. He chooses to send it all the way through. And a 2-1 lead. This is the first time that through the mid-game that they've actually been holding the lead. So, Gateway really convincing through this game number two, at least as it's gone on. And again, last game they were either down or tied, and now they've got a lead. So, proving that they can not only just win off the back of a defensive mistake and own goal, kind of a fluke, but they also can just straight up beat you at the video game. However, it's not necessarily that clear cut. We still have a minute and 30 seconds left and Uniontown's still going to fight hard. One opportunity goes by the wayside for them. Reacted Egg looking to make it another. Pop is there, but it's actually sent over him. And now Reacted Egg off the back wall. Two touches off the back wall. But Cooligan's there and consistently able to make big plays. He stays cool under pressure as he's able to keep them in the lead by one. Only by one here, but for how long? That is a question. Union Town. Oh, that's dangerous. 30 pop puke back flip. And Sergeant Cooligan, even if he was looking for a bit of a shot on target, saved away there. A minute remaining. Reacted egg. Puts in some offensive pressure. Got a bit of a oh confusing touch. Reacted egg needs to react quickly, which he does. Sends it over to Kilo. Putting it down center, getting it past one here, back onto the midfield, the ball bouncing high, who beats it to it, Sergeant Cooligan there to save the day here, a lot of boost under his belt, but decides to go for the boost again, what are you doing, lost on the ball, gets it past one, it's a pass down center, we should be seeing a second man up, but a lot of patience coming in from Gateway, and to be fair, 
And with 25 seconds remaining, patience is all you can ask for. All you need to do is hold the line down here if you want to bring down Union Town by two games. Let's find out if they can continue to do it. This is what oh, you're doing. Yeah. Lost putting a shot oh, on target. Yeah. And that might just be the final nail of the coffin for Union Town. I really think it is. Eight seconds left. You need two goals. Technically possible, but very improbable is what we use to describe a situation like this. Is well, I liked what I saw a lot from them in game one, but as we go into game two, it it's gotten a lot more shaky. They started things off strong, but they feel like they've lost a little bit of confidence. They don't quite have that same offensive pressure just naturally. The one goal they got was off the back of a really, really good bump play from Octane, but still, it, it just just kind of bumping him out of the way yes you get the goal and yes that's a very skilled way to get the goal but it's not reliable they'll come to expect some bump plays and some demos and other than that didn't really see much union town barely with any offensive control not really doing too much on the orange side of the field and when they were relied upon to play defense they weren't awful they were quite solid but not solid enough to keep the goals out from gateway they take game number two as well and in, in much more decisive fashion than the first where i would say uniontown looked like the better team in the first one gateway definitely look the better one in the second 45 percent possession compared to the 55 percent of uniontown yet they still outshot them significantly and outscored them by two that's a recipe for success if i've ever heard one yeah, you know, on just first looks here at the game scoreboard, you would not notice both of these two teams playing phenomenally differently. Gateway and Uniontown, which is a lot of back and forth here between between these two teams in the majority of the game. But the stats give us a deeper picture. It tells us how Gateway managed to procure the ball and keep it themselves for just mm -hmm. slightly longer. And that slight amount of time is all they needed to take the two-goal lead. Yeah, really just making the most of the possession that you have, whereas it felt like when Uniontown would have it, they would stall out very regularly. They would just mm. kind of take it out of their own half and not really get too much done. They'd move it a little bit up the field. Like, they'd get it downfield a bit, but it doesn't really yeah. mean much to get it down the field unless you're able to really put some meaningful shots on. And we didn't really see as much of that from Uniontown as we did in Game 1. They were out shooting... I don't know if they necessarily did, but they definitely outshot, the, outshot themselves in game two when you compare that to game one. as or They outshot themselves in game one than they did in game two. You, under, you understand what I mean. They were shooting more in game two, or game one. We get into game two. It's kind of slowing down a little bit, so I want to see them start to pick up that pace, and that might have been as a result of the way they lost that last game. Well, let's, uh, let's find out if Union 10 can pick up the pace here in game number three because, well, it is now or never here in this best of five series. You go down by three, that is good buys. You need to take a game here if you want to start the comeback, and it all starts right now. Gateway starting us off on the offensive side. Kilo not getting a shot on target. Sergeant Coolgan mm -hmm. looking for pass over to what you're doing lost, but he Ooh. seems to be a little lost here on the defense as he almost gives up a goal. And they're not out of oh. the dangerous territory yet. Union oh Town gosh. could take one here, but Gateway comes in with a save right at the end. Apuk shot on target, and he's got a lot of space to work with. UHC Octane, however, is there to save the day. 40 seconds in, which is at still a 0 0 scoreline. Nobody capitalizing on a wide open opportunity. Granted, it was very up in the air, but Union Town had a perfectly open net. They forced the double commit after loss was already kind of like you were saying looking a little bit lost but he was able to recuperate himself in time to save that and now speaking of looking lost everybody on union town double triple committing and we're starting to see the consistent rotations that i mentioned towards the start of the last game really be the difference maker as two players go up for that one to make the save reacted egg credited with it but now that just gives cool again a good opportunity to send it off the back wall again. Lost is going to try and go forward, misses the ball into the side wall. And although we haven't seen a lot of offense yet from either side, it's looking good for Gateway because they're keeping solid rotations, consistently able to for force double commits out from the defenders. And they're getting them in positions they don't want to be in. Uniontown, it looks pretty sketchy right now, but still enough time to recover. Two minutes. Still no goals here for for either the sides. Once again, a very crucial game here for Union Town. They have to take this one. But Gateway, they might seem to have other plans. Ooh, a shot opportunity. 
However, it's a little too wide. What are you doing, Lost? Decides not to pick it up immediately. Here we have Sergeant Cooligan putting a shot Ooh. on target. He's off the backboard, and the shot doesn't connect. Tough shot there from Cooligan. Was hoping that one might be able to sneak through, but just didn't quite have the angle on it. Solid defensive presence from the defenders, but I mean, overall, just kind of following each other around the field. Right now, it's Kilo following Reacted Egg, then eventually picks up the ball to try and go for a play. Egg has barely any boost, still goes for it. And it feels like they're just chasing a little bit too much without regard to where their teammates are, how much boost they have. And it's going to start to bite Uniontown in the butt, if you will, is reacted Egg moving up the field and just goes for that touch again. But that touch doesn't really get anything other than delaying the defensive rotation back, giving an opportunity over to the other team, though Gateway not able to score there. And although Pop Puke is able to send a good pass off the back wall, again, no capitalization. So fortunately for Uniontown, things will remain scoreless, but it could not be for long. As another own goal, how tragic it is. This whole series has been a, just a calamity of errors and mistakes and two own goals now in crucial situations. The first goal of the game goes to Gateway, but in a situation where it should not have at all. Oh my God. Well, that is extremely... Unfortunately, coming in for Union Town here, the second time an own goal has taken place, and there's just nothing you can do about it. It is, I mean, sure, you can prep for it, but <laughs> at this point, it seems like under this amount of pressure, you're, when you're down by two games, it seems just a little too tough at the moment. Great pass, save coming in from Poppy, though. Can he save it again? Yes, he can. Gets away with it. You wish this Octane takes it onto the midfield. He's looking for a chance at redemption. As a shot opportunity does go through, but here they go. Reacted Egg on the ball here, takes it off the sidewall. A minute and 20 seconds remaining. Oh my gosh, is that in? Oh, Ooh. careful. Okay. Fortunately, that's not in. Lost is going to go for another shot to follow it up, and it isn't either. If that just bounced straight in, that would have just been crazy. Uniontown have been very unlucky this game, but an oversight like that would have been something else. And I just, I feel like in general, there are a lot of oversights coming when it comes to looking at the bigger picture for this UHS squad. They fail to see the bigger idea rather than just going for the ball. You could go get some boost, go try and play some defense and be that last man back. But it feels like they're constantly favoring just going for that ball, hitting it as many times as they want, trying to go for something stylish as Kilo, but it's not going to come to fruition. And now nobody's really home. Reacted Egg coming at it from an awkward angle. Fortunately, nobody scores on the other team. And I don't know how many times I'm able to say, fortunately, nobody scores because Uniontown have been giving up so many opportunities gateway, not quite capitalizing all the time, but enough to keep them in the lead with 20 seconds to go. 20 seconds, oh, and they might just be looking to make the lead to what are you doing? Lost takes it up into the air, pinches it down with the enemy team, and that is all you need to do to get that second goal lead here. Two goals going in favor of gateway. The unluckiest own goal of the day, Octane just flips into it at an arbitrary angle, just uh, seemingly maybe trying to flip back to get on defense, maybe might have been out of boost, maybe thought that flipping at a certain angle would be able to get a save, but as a matter of fact does the exact opposite, looking for a third goal, lost, accidentally oh cuts off Cooligan without realizing, though someone still should be able to get it, and why not make it three own goals in the final game, as there goes the last one, and I mean, Kilo's left the lobby, so it seems that they recognize that this one is donezo. 3-0, likely to be the first the score of the final game, unless something else happens. You can't forfeit a custom match, of course, so we will still be all right. And two seconds left, it'll just run off the clock. And we will see Gateway win this series in 3-0 fashion. Not quite going to get a fourth goal in the final game, but they are going to get a third game their way without really dropping a single one, as convincing as it could have been from Gateway towards the end. Started well for Uniontown, but ended great for Gateway as they moved to 3-1. and one. Great game coming in from Gateway here. You know, we really expected uh, some phenomenal performance coming in from Uniontown, especially after that first game. However, it seems like it just was not meant to be at the moment. Gateway taking this one clean as they possibly can. 3-0 clean sweep victory. But Union Town, once again, great game. Sure, some more weeks to go here. Plenty of chances to make the comeback.
Yeah, they'll they'll have plenty of opportunities. That's the thing. And I did still like what I saw from them at the start. They looked very oh, yeah. good. Like every single player was a talented Rocket League player. They just need to get some more time in, you know, playing some ranked games, maybe scrimming some other TEC teams and really letting themselves mesh together as a roster. It felt like in a lot of cases they weren't playing off of their teammates or as aware as they should have been of where everybody else was on the field. But that field is no longer going to be featuring Gateway, and it's no longer going to be featuring Uniontown. We've got two new teams coming up in the next series, and we'll go to a break just before that, but stick around as we have another exciting match of High School Rocket League for all of you.
Hello, everybody. We are back from that break after the first matchup went the way of Gateway in 3-0 fashion. We're on board for some more this time around. It's another matchup that interests me when looking at the scoreboard, and so it'll set to be, hopefully, as interesting as the last one was. Thank you very much for sticking around. My name is Happy, and along with me so far tonight through our first game and our second game as well is Flater. And Flater, how do we feel about this next game we're getting into? It's gonna be um, it's gonna be an interesting one. We got Bishop Guilfoyle going up against Winber. Now both of these teams currently in the lower half of the scoreboard, looking for their first win. So on the bright side, one of these teams are gonna secure their very first win here in <laughs> Division One. So let's go, happy. Oh, I'm so excited. As well as the name Bishop Guilfoyle is one of the most fun team names <laughs> I've casted in quite some time, but. 0-2, Bishop, 0-3, Winbur. This is why it's interesting because, well, how on earth do these teams end up here? We're going to see for ourselves who the better of the two squads is. And unfortunately, they've come this far without yet winning a match. So they will, at the very least, like you said, one of them be able to do just that. And we will have even less of an opportunity, even less a likelihood of ending the season with a lot of teams without a win. You like to see as many different teams as you can get the wins. I mean, it's nice to spread the love, you know, but unfortunately there are some teams who just can't quite do it in the matchups. But one of those teams is now going to finally be able to do it today. So will it be Bishop Guilfoyle or will it be Windber? That's the question on everybody's mind. And I don't know. I'm just going to say Bishop Guilfoyle just because I like the name. That's all really. All right, well. I'm it's Bishop Guilfoyle and Winber. I'm not really sure who I would side with, so I'm I'm guessing I'll just have to look at the game for that one. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of which, we have the game to look at right now. It's Gil Windber and Bishop Guilfoyle into game number one, and we're going to start off this next series. It took a, not too long into our first game to really see some threatening opportunities for one side however it took a long time before we saw a goal so will that trend carry into this matchup as well or will there be a lot of action very quickly Cade already flying high looking for a shot but not gonna get what he wanted which was the goal it's gonna go a little bit off to the side after the save is made and well we still remain scoreless with 30 seconds down what surprises me the most is, ladies and gentlemen, I'm having a quick look at the scoreboard here. Kadeth possesses a title that only, what, 2% of the player, uh, player base currently has, and that is the Season 2 Grand Champion. Oh, so wow. it really surprises me to see Bishop Guilfoyle currently at an 0-2 scoreline. And the, more, and the more I think about it, the more it makes me think that they might just have faced some mm. of the Titans here mm. in Division 1. I told you, I had Bishop Guilfoyle for a reason that wasn't just their name, except it was. But Kadeth, looking to be the reason why everybody's got so much faith in them now. The S2 Grand Champ is able to make things happen, knock that one down, and make it a 1-0 lead for Bishop Guilfoyle. As we are only a minute and two seconds into this first game, and already they start things off electrically with very little to speak of on the opposite side as there hasn't really been many opportunities for Windber. Matter of fact, Wyatt only touched the ball for the third time just there. And so that just goes to show how low action a game it's been for their side so far. Quite low action at the moment, but they could be looking to switch that one up. Windber, they're looking to get out their own half currently, and that's how it all starts. Kate it. That should be, the, should be the one that's stealing away possession. Oh, he's coming in with style. Does he get it? No, he does not. That is opportunity once again in the hands of Winber as they try to put in more and more shots on target. But it is once again Bishop Guilfoyle walking away with this one. Shot opportunity Ooh. saved away by Random. Random with a massive play to make there this time around. It's Kurt Bush and Kadeth looking to make that 50 50 happen in the midfield. But it's now back to Yermad alone in the corner. Really tough situation, but is able to deal with it well. Now Kadeth. Of course, deals with that one well, but takes it across the center of the net, catches both of his teammates committing, and now a triple commit not capitalized on, though, on though as Nightmare accidentally sends it over his teammate trying to make a clear, and so now they will have to deal with the situation they've created. However, it looks to be all right for Winberg, but Kadeth with the ball again, never a good situation for you if you're on the defending end of that, and he's able to make a lot out of a little there with the air dribble, but not enough to get it by anybody. 
Looking for another opportunity, though. Taking it to the middle. The air dribble's clean. And Kurt Bush's finish off is even cleaner. A second goal for Bishop Guilfoyle. As they are making it look pretty simple. Man just manipulating this defense perfectly. And they've got two goals as a result. As we're just over halfway through this game one. Halfway through and yet so much pressure coming in from Bishop Guilfoyle mm -hmm. here. Remember, they're just wondering as to how to counter these amazing shots coming in from Bishop Guilfoyle. 730 points to random names. I'm not sure how you can counter that, but an opportunity mm -hmm. coming in for Bishop Guilfoyle, Guilfoyle here, rather, once again, excuse me. RCS, you're mad. Does it get out of the way? Get out of the way here and makes a shot on target. Your man YT takes the third goal here for Bishop Guilfoyle. Just a great start to the game from them so far. Random get caught in a really awkward spot. Has to reverse into being able to play with that one. And it's just not going to work out. Unfortunately, takes it into the middle, which is exactly what Bishop Guilfoy were hoping he would do. Was your man able to get a goal of their own on the board? A minute and 50 left in this game. Random hoping they don't go down scoreless, but Kadith is at least going to shut down that opportunity in its tracks as the goal comes and goes, or at least the shot comes and goes without a goal yet for Windberg, as they don't have that much time to work with. Still a minute 30, so it's like a lot of time, but to make up a three goal lead, that's not really that much to work alongside. 90 seconds, three goals, even though it's technically possible against a team like Win Ooh, Bishop Guilfoyle, we might as well start looking at game number two now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and yeah, as we look into game number two, do really want to see a lot of improvements from Winberg. Mostly just get more active, get out there. Don't be so afraid because you know this is a very talented team. You see that Grand Champ title and you can only be so confident in your own gameplay and how it'll stack up against your opponents. And also players like Your Mad and Kurt Busch have also been doing a lot of damage through this game. But they've really got to get out of their own half. They've barely had any shots on goal. It's one from Random and one from Nightmare. Six touches from Wyatt so far this game. And Kate is looking for another goal there. Not quite able to do it. But yeah, I would like to see a lot more confident in a version of Winberg than we've seen in this game so far. Really get out there and challenge them because the more space you give them, the more comfortable they'll be able to be. And the more players like Kate will be able to send shots through, but not able to score that one, fortunately, for Winberg. They might get a bit of dignity out of coming out 3-0 rather than 4-0, but no, they're not going to be able to stop. The unstoppable tide of Bishop Guilfoyle. Kurt Busch gets his second goal of the series, and 22 seconds left is more than enough time for them to feel comfortable with. More than enough, and it is insurance for days, if not years. Four goal lead here for Bishop Guilfoyle, and that is all you need to secure a game here. Yeah, all you really need, Winber just taking their time. And I mean, hey, like, look, take the offensive opportunities you can. Take those plays off the roof because, you know, you don't have much to play for here. Kate is just going to pad the stats, making it a second goal off of an eighth shot. An offensive savant he's proven to be so far this game. Two for eight, not necessarily incredibly good in terms of converting, but they've gotten so many opportunities, just especially with what we saw in that last game, the ability in these high school lobbies to just put shots towards the net is so unspeakably important as there's another one going towards the net and not just towards it goes in Kadith making it 6-0 just before the time expires just to rub a little salt in that wound and make sure the mental is destroyed as much as it can be as Winber might be able to recover next game but Kadith if he has anything to say about it they will not stand a single chance at remaining in a good mood coming out of this game one at zero seconds, the ball is looking to do, looking to drop down, and that will be Bishop Guilfoy closing this one out, taking a three-goal more lead in that last one minute. Bishop Guilfoy 6-0 here in game number one, and that looks like the Bishop Guilfoy that we all know and love. <laughs> Absolutely ferocious on offense as well as the defense. Yeah, and I mean, Kadith MVP for a reason with so many offensive plays. Got nine shots in that game, 53 touches total. Random, though, credit to him because 50 touches to rival the 53 of Kadith was really getting involved. Three different saves as well as a demo. So 
Random is trying to find impact where they can. It's just been an unfortunate game number one. And against a player like Kadith and an overall mm. squad like Bishop Guilfoyle, there's not much that Winber can really do. Or at the very least, Random is going to try their best to make it, you know, possible, plausible. Make it look like they really do stand a chance. And if Winber can come out of this with even so much as an OT game or a close loss... I, Definitely reason to be happy, at least for me, against the team that you're playing against, where at least the rank disparity looks to be relatively wide, especially considering the Grand Champ title on Kadith and nothing really similar on the side of Winber. Yeah, and you know, you gotta wonder what kind of situ what kind of strategies do Winber have to switch up? What kind of strategies do they have to come in with here in game number two if they want to take this game against Bishop Guilfoyle, who as we just noticed, have dominated the competition. They clearly know what they're doing, how they want to execute it, and when they wanna do it. So it's all up to Winber to launch the counterattack. That's going to be what it comes down to, is they're looking to do just that, getting into game number two. And no, I think I think everybody's here. Yeah, for a second it took somebody long to join, but we are still just going to play it out already. And regardless, no need to rehost the lobby and let everybody join in for the kickoff. Everything seems to be just fine as Winber definitely happy with the state of affairs towards the start of the game as they are the ones to win that kickoff and doing so much off the back of it. Random, almost able to make a big play, trying to step things up and really be that impact player that their team needs, but. As they try to make an impact, a couple commits off the back of it when there shouldn't have been. And Winber nearly caught on the other end, getting a little too aggressive. But neither team will score, so Bishop Guilfoyle will remain on the defensive end as Winber with more opportunities. More opportunities, but how more do they need in order to stop yeah. Bishop Guilfoyle from securing goals like this, Kata just walks on in on oh, this wall here. Just mm -hmm. not a lot of effort put in this one. Walks on to it, shoots the ball on target, and that is the very first goal going in favor of Bishop Guilfoyle. They make it look easy. Oh yeah, absolutely. They're able to cleanly get that one done, and Bishop Guilfoyle just... I mean, not much else to say. It's the same way they started the last series. They're just taking care of business where they need to. The defense is solid enough to keep opportunities out of the hands of players like Random, who can be dangerous and almost make big plays like we know they can. However, Kadith is going to take that opportunity away from Random. You're mad. Leaves it off the crossbar, though. So, missed opportunity there from BG. But they're not really going to need too many more chances if they can continue to play the defense they've been playing all game and all series as it's been very little to speak of on the offensive side from Winber. 90 seconds into this one, Winber still down by one here. Can they find that one goal equalizer? It all stands right, it all stands right, starts right now. Taking the ball away from Kadith. Shot opportunity. Oh, it's Kurt Bush coming in with a save here. Multiple demos in a row. And that might just be, oh my god. Jeez. That is dangerous territory here. <laughs> dangerous as ever, but I love that defensive response that we saw from Bishop Guilfoy. They're not just a very strong team on the offensive side. Is what a redirect that is from Kadith. I was going to talk about the defense for a second, but never mind. Kadith just takes the words right out of my mouth and replaces them with speechlessness time and time again. That's a wonderful redirect. Sends that one into the top center of the net and makes it a 2-0 lead for Bishop Guilfoyle as just completely changes the pace of the game. It looked like not much was going on, but that's just the impact that Kadith can have in a lobby, and he's going to do it again. A third goal on the way for Kadith and for Bishop Guilfoyle. And they're just making it look a little too easy as the Grand Champ's able to take another one and make it a hat trick as we're not even halfway through the game. Almost halfway through the game here. Half, <sighs> half the time also remaining here in game two. So happy, you gotta wonder. This has been Bishop Guilfoyle at its best, at the very least, because this is one team that no matter what kind of strategies you bring up, it all comes down to the sheer mechanics and your understanding off the field here and mm -hmm. Bishop Guilfoyle seems like they have it to an extent where Winbridge just does not. 
Yeah, and that can kind of bring me back to the thing I was going to say before. Uh, that was a really good redirect from Kadeth. But what I was going to say is that they recognize their defense is in a pretty jeopardized position. They're not really looking too great at the moment. And so they can recognize the threat and take care of it immediately. And there, that was kind of the opposite of that. A very good example of the opposite of that is they see the threat and then... Well, they take care of it, but not really in the way they would have liked to. Accidental own goals do happen. We saw plenty of them last game, and it, nothing has changed into this one. An unfortunate goal on their own net from Windbur, and then credit goes to Kurt Busch. It's, it's another game in a row where Kurt Busch is able to sneak in a goal, which is also a very... I, I like the name. I, I A part of me wants to think that, that that's actually literally just a kid named Kurt Busch. That would be... I would just That would just make me happy. I don't know. I, I like it's a like a production's telling him it's like a famous NASCAR driver, but I, I I'm I'm actually just gonna say no. I think this is literally a person named Kid Kurt Busch. I just think it is. Could very well be here, you know, and Uri could just very well be a normal name. Not that I'm not that big of a NASCAR dude. I don't know much oh, about cars no. anymore. The yeah. only cars that I know <laughs> about are the ones that hit balls at speeds greater than light. Hmm. Yeah, and these ones are doing a pretty good job of it, at least if you're talking about the side, ones on the side of Bishop Guilfoyle. At least a minute left, and they're in a clean 4-0 to zero advantage. Kurt Busch leaves that one off the back wall to try and get some offense going, and eventually does. Very little resistance from Windburn. Nobody even close to challenging that at the midfield. And that's what I'd like to see a bit of a difference on. I said it last game, and I want to see it ag again next game. I want to see it next game, so I, I will say it again. They gotta get more aggressive. The midfield possession battle isn't a battle at all so much as it is just the midfield possession forfeiting. As once again, you're mad able to just get a free touch there. Everybody nearby, but nobody contesting for the ball. They're like putting themselves in places where they think they might get shot rather than trying to go to where the ball actively is. And it's a much less effective strategy than really trying to challenge it. So I'd like to see that change as we get into the next game because if nothing changes, it's set to be a dominant blowout of a 3-0 sweep from Bishop Guilfoyle off the back of some offensive masterpieces from Kadith, a couple very solid goals from Kurt Busch, and really good defense from the whole entire squad. Yeah, there's just no topping that here. Uh, it is Bishop Guilfoyle doing what Bishop Guilfoyle mm -hmm. does best, and that is plus play some good Rocket League. They almost secured a sixth goal here, did come pretty close mm -hmm. though. Was really not able to make it through. Mm -hmm. Five goal lead nonetheless. It's really pretty good happy. Oh yeah, I'm definitely happy with that if I am on the side of Bishop Guilfoyle. And something I'd like to point out about the goals they scored. Kadith and Kurt Bush at two different points through that game had more goals than they had shots. Kadith, Kurt Bush actually ends the game with two goals off of one shot. And before he had the last shot of that game, Kadith was three for two. So you know it was a rough defensive game for your team when you are letting in more goals than the other team has even shot shots on goal to begin with. And that just kind of goes to show that Bishop Guilfoyle really just had control the whole way through, never let up. And Windbert, again, as much as they were able to put in a valiant effort, it really wasn't able to amount to much by the very end of it. And... As a result, Bishop Guilfoyle take the next one in dominant fashion. I would like to say, though, Flater, do we think Winber will be able to put a goal in? Or really, I mean, will they be able to make it close in this last game is one thing. But again, do we think they'll be able to put a goal in in this last one and really start to maybe get some kind of offense going? Because I would love to see that from Winber. Right. I mean, uh, one thing to note here, just just so that whenever you go up against teams that are slightly better than you, that are even much better than you on the mechanics side, it is not a bad sign. It is a learning opportunity, and Winbird, that is what you should consider it as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that is just all you can really take out of something like this. You get put up against the team, and they are a very stacked, talented roster with players who are offensive threats anywhere on the pitch and all you can really say is hey look we're just going to try and make the most of this chance that we've been given and see what we can learn and all that i want winber to learn out of this situation is once again 
you've got to get more aggressive when you're on defense. When you're playing offense, they're not doing a terrible job of getting aggressive to actually take some shots. But when they're on defense, they're just kind of hoping the ball doesn't end up in their net rather than really trying to intervene 50-50 and challenge the offensive players is we're getting into the what could be the final game, the third and possibly final game of the series. And if Kadeth has anything to say about it, it will be the final game. Nine seconds in and another goal scored for the man in the light blue octane as it's a 1-0 lead already for Bishop Guilfoyle. And you have to wonder, how is this man always ready, present in the right position at the right time to take these goals here? Two minutes and uh, two, 20 seconds, rather, 10 seconds into this one, and they already have a one goal lead. Already up by such a wide margin. And I'm only saying that because to be up whatsoever in the first nine seconds is as wide of a margin as you could have. Random looking to close the gap, but nobody there to make something happen and get the goal through in the midfield. Nightmare 50 50s with Kadeth. That's a good kind of 50-50 to see. It's a promising for the future. Is Nightmare able to play off that touch from Random? If Nightmare and Random are able to have some solid communication up the field, the way they've been communicating pretty well, kind of all day on the defensive end and all day in the midfield as well, it, it'll definitely translate to some offense or at the very least more offensive opportunities as Nightmare unfortunately not able to hit that one. Wyatt is able to get the touch and send it forward, but Kadeth eventually ends up with the ball once again and that spells trouble for Windber, however, random, able to get it back, drops it low, not able to score, but it's threatening. Nightmare close once again, but you're mad. Is able to send it away from the post and still no goals as Windber remain in search of their first goal of the series. It might just come though, oh. but Wyatt's missed the opportunity and random sends it too high. It's a little bit far out to score now and so many chances back to back to back, but none go through for Windber. Man, this is just extremely unfortunate. So many opportunities, yet none of them not working out here. We see Kurt now in possession of the ball, taken immediately away. As we see a shot coming into his bottom right corner, saved away now. Heading back on the midfield, off the backboard. Kurt, here in the corner, good clear coming in from the orange side here. Random. That's a pretty good flip reset, but it, they just do not end up getting out of their own half. It might just be Bishop Guilfoy taking a goal, but Nightmare comes in with a save, and that's a huge miss right in front of the goal line. Yeah, massive miss to force there for Winber, as it's been over two minutes since a goal's been scored. And so, Winber, looking like they could possibly threaten it, and then again, it wouldn't be... Uh, a situation in one of these games if I didn't mention something good for one team and then it goes horribly horribly wrong as soon as I mentioned that as it was just over two minutes still since we last saw a goal so naturally it's about time for another one that one goes all the way down the field and another goal for Kadeth as the offense is just pouring on and halfway through what looks to be the final game of the series though Windber uh, who's to say they won't come alive at the very very end Right, that's the plan here, right? That's what you want to see coming in from Winber. But so far, Bishop Guilfoyle, they just seem to have, they just seem like they have a number of whoever mm -hmm. they were going up against. Two goal lead, they're trying to extend it even further. We got Winber here on the defensive side. Kadet looking to pick possession back up. That's a huge bump. And that would be the perfect goal coming off of the bump here. And that is your Mayor YT going up by seven goals. Yeah, and your mad just kind of puts it in, just does a clean job. Not much, not really much else you could say. Credit to your mad. It's been a slower series for them because Kadeth has done so much where Kadeth has been lacking. Uh, it's been a lot of Kurt Busch on the offense as well. I get the vibe that Mad is kind of a little more defensive, a little more laid back, and that hasn't really been as necessary as WAHS have not really you know, gotten too much offense going. They haven't really had too many threatening shots, so there hasn't been much of a need for Yermad to really step in, though still finding a little bit of contributions here and there on the offensive side with the goal every now and again. And I mean, when your team wins every single game of the series in three or in three zero, seven zero, six zero fashion without letting any goals in on the from the other team, you don't have oh. much to complain about, but there it is, Nightmare! Able to get a goal for Winber and they are able 
to get it done. That question I posed before this game began, it's a resounding yes for WAHS as to whether or not they will be able to get that final goal, or that first goal, as it might not be the final goal. They could be mounting a comeback You're here. Cursing it again, Happy. I, I don't, okay, you know what? Anything can happen. I don't know what's gonna happen, <laughs> and I'm not gonna acknowledge anything that exists, apparently. Because <laughs> oh if I do anything else, it, something's gonna go horribly wrong. Oh, but it seems like it's going really well for Winber at the moment. They're down only by four with a minute remaining. This is definitely a possible nightmare. You know, he's looking for the dribble to get it past all three players, but it seems like your man YT takes it back on the other side now. Corner, corner, touch. Kurt comes in again, and that Ooh. might just be, once again, a three-goal lead here. Hmm. Final goal. And, you know, look, I don't well, know. Uh, okay, final goal for them. Final goal for uh, Winberg. Who knows? Maybe it was their <laughs> first and, and final, seemingly. as 47 seconds left for Winberg to put another one up there. And at the rate they've been going, they aren't going to get even close. But then again, at the rate they were going coming into this game, they weren't going to score at all. And they were able to do just that. However, your mad has other plans as that shot goes on net. But gets shut down very, very quickly as Random is in the way, but Kurt Busch just sends it over the whole defense, beats everybody in one simple touch and a 5-1 to one lead. Could we be looking at a Brazil, a 7-1? to one? Will there be two goals in the final 27 seconds as Kurt Busch sneaks that one through to bring us two goals away from being at that 7-1, to one, the oh-so-infamous Brazil scoreline? Definitely possible. 5-1 to one here. Two more goals coming in from Bishop, Bishop Guilfoy, nothing that we haven't seen before from this team but it seems like when but you know they might just not be allowing that pretty easily it's a pretty good bump and that could be nightmares opportunity to take that second goal deny happy's prediction but no that isn't the case two goals 10 seconds you're mad oh. yt you gotta bring in the oh. first one never mind it hits the post and with that it's gonna hit zero seconds bishop guilfoyle are gonna take game number three and with that the best of five series they do win it in dominant fashion, literally almost as dominant as you could have been, aside from the one goal they let up very late in that last game. Congratulations to Nightmare for finally being able to put one away. That must have been at least a little fun for Winber, but that's a game and a series as a whole where you're really going to have to find silver linings like that. Like, oh, we scored. We're able to score a goal. Oh, congratulations, guys, because there, there really wasn't much else to celebrate in that game for Winterbird, to be completely honest with you. But once again, as we have already mentioned, nothing to scoff about Winber. Going up against better teams is going to help you improve faster than you can imagine in a game like Rocket League, Valorant, no matter what you're playing, Overwatch. I don't, I haven't played Overwatch, but that's just how <laughs> esports, that's just how sports work in general. Playing, oh, yeah. playing a team better than you it's mm -hmm. gonna improve your skill significantly. So mm -hmm. just uh, you know, take it with a smile here and keep practicing. But that was series number two of the day. We'll be back with series number three very, very soon. So stay tuned. Don't go anywhere.
Final day of the game, the final series is going to be between Altoona and Forest Hills, the Titans of Division 1, the Legends, the Monsters, whatever you want to call them. They're great at the game and happy. Uh, let me tell you a quick story about these two, te these two teams. I believe a top three last season, Altoona along with Forest Hills. Forest Hills currently 4-0 in the Division 1 standings with Altoona CTC sitting at 3-0. So here to tie it up. Or will we see Forest Hills pulling ahead? We will find out soon enough. Man, I we could not have asked for a greater series to end the day. It, it, it's oh, just yeah. about like the perfect little conclusive, conclusive, nice, nice little wrap it up, nice you know, like a like a gift. Wrap it up, a nice little bow oh, on yeah. top. That's what today is, and this <laughs> is the bow. This game is exactly what you were looking for to end off what's been a very fun day of Rocket League. And granted, though. Not a lot of these games have been super close. Our first series started pretty close, but as the games went on, it got a little further and further away. That last mm -hmm. series that we just watched, unfortunately, was not as close. It seemed that, you know, definitely was a better team between the two. However, a good learning experience, to be sure. And also still uh, a lot to, of good to be taken out of that game for both teams. But this one is really the banger matchup that we've been looking for and hoping for through the day. It's been two three O's through this day so far, and I would be shocked if it was a third. This one almost definitely going to have wins for both teams across the series. Absolutely, and let's find out who is going to take that win. Will it be Forest Hills bringing it up to 5-0, or will it be Altoona CTC tying up? With Forest Hills, let's find out. Here we go. Game number one of the best of five series. The Clash of the Titans is going in now. The Clash of the Titans is as good a way to describe it as any. As already, pretty good start. And kickoff is decisively won by Greater Altoona, though. They're not quite able to hold on to it for too long, as eventually it does go back into the favor of Forest Hills. Now it's more Titian men just trying to make a play on the defensive side and I mean just very quick little both teams getting opportunities in the other team's half but none of them really come to fruition quite yet as defense again for Forest Hills but now with turning it into offense back wall saved away by Mr. Chimp and already you can see the level at which these two teams are playing so so high compared to a lot of the teams we've been watching it just goes to show how excellent they are pigby almost able to make it a goal and the mega blaziken almost able to do with one as well but neither team scores neither player scores and we remain scoreless through this match Altoona CDC coming in with Mr. Chimp, Mortician, Men, and Square CU. Of course, Forest Shields, we got Pig B, Mega Blaziken, and giving you Hail here. Oh, that was a pretty good shot coming in from Mortician Men, but an even better mm. save. Now, pulling in from Pig B here. Pig B is again the legend of the entire Division 1 scene, a top 100 used to be mm. in Rocket League. So, a pretty cool guy a pretty high ranking guy as well going into this one however Altoona CTC are playing a phenomenal game so far 90 seconds into this one and they haven't let Forest Hills score a goal yeah and well that's definitely a good start for Altoona especially when like Flader said you're going to get somebody who has a history in the top 100 of one versus ones I think you said I mean just just a very prolific player and a prolific team in general Forest Hills the champions of last season's circuit 
What are they going to do this year, though? Well, it comes down to this matchup, really, because you're matching up against one of the other projected best teams in the country, or at least in this tournament in TEC. So that's exactly why it's so exciting to watch these two go up against each other. And they've been at, at odds all game, and it's just been so even. Neither team able to get anything through. Close opportunities just there for one side. Forest Hills able to deal with it well as Greater Altoona need to look into the future for more opportunities. Well, that's where CU. He's going to get multiple touches on the ball there. Put it down center. Pig B, great intercept. Goes up high and looks for the fake over to Mr. Chim, but he does a great job to get that ball back onto a go to side. And that is Mortician Men coming in off of an amazing double touch. The pass from Square CU giving Gabriel Tuna their very first goal. What a beautiful angle for Mortician Men. Not just the fact that he was even able to put it through, but also the fact that he snuck in the right side of the net. Same side that he shot it from, he was able to sneak it just inside that post, and I don't think it could have been any better placed. But there you go, a shot in return already from Forest Hills, but unfortunately not able to drive that one through is 1-0. Remains the advantage for Greater Altoona. Mortician Men up for a challenge and is up to the task of getting to that one establishing some possession for Greater Altoona. And what an angle that is from Chimp! How does he hit it? That's not real! You don't see this every day. Greater Altoona came in this one and they chose war against Forest Hills, taking two goals now here in game one. Happy this might just be Forest Hills' very first game loss that we're looking at today here in the entire Division 1. Game loss, not even series. Jeez, they've been, I mean, they've been 3-0-ing all season long, but it hasn't been against Altoona, that's for sure. And they're already getting shown exactly why this one's going to be so much tougher than their previous games. Two quick goals, one from Mortician Men, one from Chimp, and Square CU putting in work wherever else it needs to be put in. It doesn't even feel like it's just a great game from, you know, the greater Altoona gang. It's just Forest Hills barely even getting a chance to get started. Every time it gets into the blue half, it feels like it's cleared immediately. It absolutely is here in Pig B, you know, he, the, the legend that we know him is he isn't able to do anything alone at the moment. He's able to get those clears, but you need to follow them up. But look at the speed with which these shots are cleared away. Martician men really coming into this one, uh, being very strong on the play field and bringing on the third goal here for Altoona CTC. Altoona just pouring it on and Mortician men with a second already looking great for them and i mean with such a distinct advantage as well it's just it feels like at this point forest hills they haven't been able to get much cooking in the kitchen so far only three shots compared to the three goals of their opponents and you hate to see it you wanted to see a lot of good come out from forest hills and i'm sure we'll see it as the series goes on as that one could possibly be in square cu not able to get back in time and so forest hills gonna shut me up real quick as they still very much have a chance in this game and 53 seconds left to bring it back from two goals down. A two goal deficit of course extremely capable for us too and this team is extremely capable of making that kind of comeback but it all comes down to give a uh, will Altoona give them this that kind of space to work with. All they can do is continue to take the ball high up in the air and play with it for as much as as longer as they can. Mortician Shinman, however, is gonna come into this one, send it into the corner, no second touch for him. Big B, plenty of space, but no momentum. It's gonna slow the play down here, get it past one, but time is ticking down here. Happy 30 seconds remaining for us. Jules is still down by two. That they are, and they are gonna have to get something to go. They've got a lot of possession for quite some time, but made nothing of it. Now they'll have to try and reestablish said possession. Doing a better job here. Pigby following up Hale, but neither of them are able to sneak it through. How's about Mortician Men with that save? Chimp, unlucky touch. It's in front of the net. Risky situation, but Square CU is going to make it okay for now. Mega Blaziken going to leave it into the middle for Forest Hills, but it's not going to be enough. And as clock hits zero seconds, you can't make up a two-goal lead when it's physically impossible to score more than one. And that's exactly the situation that Altoona CTC find themselves on the good end of at the end of game one. They are the first team to take any single individual game off of Forest Hills. They're looking to do one better and be the first team this season to be able to take a whole series. And it starts with that game right there. Well, it's going to be a tough task, but I definitely feel like they're up to it. Altoona CTC winning this game by not one happy. 
but two goals. Mm -hmm. Two goals more than mm -hmm. a pay, pay emphasis, a pay keen attention to this one. Forest Hills. Mm. Forest Hills. Oh, yeah. And and when you look at the total touches on their team as well, it becomes evidently clear that more so than most other teams we see in the TEC High School Series, it's an even effort across the way. I believe they were mm. all within like 10 sh touches of one another. Everybody was putting on shots. Everybody wasn't scoring per se as Mortician Men was able to get two. And uh, so, you know, naturally that leaves one teammate without a goal of their own. But honestly, a win is a win. And especially against a team like Forest Hills, I'm not disappointed about not scoring. I'm just happy to have gotten that W and to be ahead of a team as good as them in the series already as we sneak into the next game. It's going to be an exciting one to see what a team like Mortician Men, Mr. Shim Square CU, can do against the reigning champions of the Rock League Division 1 here at Tech High School Series. But let's find out if Game 2 is going to produce a different outcome. Forest Hills Altoona are now heading out of the field once again. Ooh, Square CU nearly starting things off strong. Almost able to sneak that one through. Big save for Blaziken, but... That one save isn't really enough to establish offense. Pigby is going to have to do that, but not able to. As Square CU almost able to sneak one through and preventing Pigby from a being able to score one of his own. Big demos on Forest Hills on the defense. They're going to shut down the offense by just killing everybody on who was trying to make an attack. Demoing their cars and making sure they're not going to be on the field. But Mortician Men is still a threat. Anyways, big save from Blaziken though. And it remains scoreless somehow after so many big saves. You shot coming in from Square CU off the backboard. It's even better clear coming in from Forest Chills. But as the ball goes from one corner of the field to another, you gotta wonder, Forest Chills, what is your strategy here? How do you take that Ooh. one goal lead? Well, Pigby says, aren't you watching? <laughs> I'm doing it right now. The double touch coming in from Pigby as he got it past two players and takes the very first goal to Forest Chills here in series. In the final series of the day in game two. Yeah, that's as many as they were able to put on the board in all of the first game, and they've done it just now, all through the help of Pig B, able to easily tap that one off the back wall and make it a 1-0 lead. And I, I correct me if I'm wrong, I believe that's Forest Hill's first lead of today, because I think it was Mortician Man able to score the first goal last series. Square to you. Almost able to bring it back to even here as well, but he'll get shut down. And so, pressure still on for Forest Hills, but they have a lead, so it's not too uncomfortable. And even after having a lead, the, the confidence to stay on the offensive side against a team like Forest Hills, well, Ooh. I've got to say, i got to say I love that confidence. But Pig B is going to come into this one and shred it to pieces because after minutes and mere minutes of continuous off continuous offense coming in from Altoona, Forest Hill says now it's our turn. Now it is and well they look fantastic now that they finally really started showing up and showing out. The Forest Hills that everybody who's been a familiar with TEC for quite some time well the Forest Hills they've come to know and really appreciate is two to nothing the lead they stand at now mortician men looking for a play off that back wall it's square cu in the midfield leaving it over to mortician but pigby gets in the way and makes it a clear might even make it a scoring opportunity though chimp is there it's still on the ropes for greater altoona as they're getting shots fired at their net and they haven't even scored yet this game and three minutes left to work with is okay but they're gonna have to get something on the board soon because forest hills will not let the lead go easily and square cu able to find the solution Bringing it back to within one good pass from Mortician Men. And Hale tried to clear it away, but it just went right where Square CU wanted it. That was a good save coming in from the orange side. However, not good enough. Altoona CTC is going to take that one goal here in game two. And that's going to cut the lead down here in half. Let's find out if Forest Hills can continue with that kind of domination. Or will it be... Altoona tying it all up once again. It's a bit of a shot on target. 50 feet away into the corner. Forest Chills are going to pick this one up. Possession opportunity here for Square CU. Takes it high, takes it into the corner. Pig B off the sidewall here. No second touch yet. And the ball continues to hover around here in the orange half. 
that it does, and it will remain there until someone steps in. That someone is Meza Mega Blaziken, and the someone to keep Blaziken's shot out is Chimp. However, that one floating midfield needs to be dealt with, and Mortician went up for the task. Square CU going to continue to go, and... Well, Altoona, they've been doing a good job at getting a lot of possession in that orange half, but when it comes to shooting on target, it's not that they've been off per se, but forcing uncomfortable shots are Forest Hills, and that's been what they've been thriving in defensively so far. Well, they've still got plenty of time here, you know, in, in game number two. Only one Ooh. goal is all it takes, and Mr. Chim says, I got you. I'm going to take that one goal right now and bring, make this game a lot closer. Then it looks 2-2 two to two with a minute and 40 seconds remaining. Greater Altoona have tied up the second game of the series. Greater Altoona make the comeback happen, and they are just as lethal as last game, even if the defense has maybe not been lacking, but the rather the offense has been better from Forest Hills. Hale not able to get that touch. How about Pigby? What can you do? Trying to take it up, not able to make anything happen. Shut down by Square CU. And now it's going to be Chimp and Mortician Men trying to make a play up the field. Square CU leaves it high, but it's going to be touched next by Hale. No, actually, a double miss, an uncharacteristic double miss, will leave it in the orange half with Forest Hill scrambling to recover. And though it doesn't look great, technically hasn't been scored on, so things are still fine for FH. That's a pretty good beat here, but Mr. Chimp might be beating him back to the ball. And happy with only 60 seconds remaining, it is very tough to tell who is going to take these next few goals. Mr. Champ looking to get it out of his own half, not so fast. It's Square mm -hmm. CU to save the day here. Opportunity for a shot on target taken away as the ball goes back into the midfield here. Magician men, here he is on the ball, sending it to Mr. Champ now. Shot opportunity, it's, uh, well, taken mm -hmm. without a lot of patience in mm -hmm. mind. 37 seconds remaining here, this is anybody's game. Oh, absolutely is. We've got 30 seconds of the clock. Pigby there, up to the task of keeping that shot out. Wants to dribble it over everybody. He might just be able to do just that, but Chimp steps in in the last second, intervenes, and not only gets the save, but actually gets a clear out as well, giving an opportunity to Mortician Men, but a short-lived one as Pigby is able to deal with it fast, moving up the field. So eloquent in his movement, but the ball movement needs to be just as good. It is, but is the ball good enough with the ball movement good enough to move into the net? Not quite, as the, all Forest Hills really need to do at the moment is make sure it doesn't get into their own net. They're able to hold off for the rest of regulation, and Greater Altoona have come back from 2-0 down to force OT to possibly go 2-0 up in a series, and Mr. Chimp wants to end it quickly, but Pigby says no. Ooh. Well, this overtime right here is going to decide who's going to take game number two. Happy. So many predictions being made here in the casting booth. And, you know, Mortician <laughs> Men just comes in and like, yeah, yeah, we do this wow. on a daily basis here. No big deal. <laughs> We're coming into this one. Ten seconds of overtime. That's fine. Altoona CTC <laughs> taking a second game win here. Forest Shows, they started off strong here in game number two. Got that two goal lead. And Altoona said, let me just make it three. Yeah, I don't. I'm sure you could tell with where I left that dialogue off, but I was anticipating that being quite the long and arduous battle into OT. But Mortician Men has simply had enough, as Mr. Chimp wins the MVP in that one. An uncharacteristically high amount of touches compared to his teammates, especially when compared to last game, is 14 more than both Mortician Men and Square CU. But sometimes, as good as your team is as a whole, you just need a massive outperformance from one player to really step above the other team. And that's exactly what we saw from Mr. Chimp, as he's able to work things out perfectly to get it to 2-0. And now, it's Forest Hills who haven't lost a single game all season not just single match but single game within the matches coming into this they hadn't lost a single game now they've lost two when they haven't won a single one in this series really on the ropes more so than we'd ever expected for them to be yeah would not expect altoona taking two wins two wins mm -hmm. against a team like forest chills let's see if they can close it out though and that is the biggest question here two wins sure Altoona CDC, a moment to celebrate, but a moment is all it is. Game number three, however, is actually going to decide who is going to take the win here. But I believe we are going to be taking a very short break. Forest Shields wants to take a bit of a tactical timeout to decide how they want to process <laughs> game number three. So we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere.
Hello, we're back already staring down an unlikely early end to a series. And the reason you say unlikely was because not only is it an unlikely series to end quickly, as I personally said before this series, that I thought this, this there's no chance this ends in a 3-0. It's an unlikely ending because of the team who's in the lead as well. Forest Hills have historically <laughs> been so dominant, and Greater Altoona come out the gates swinging in their series against Forest Hills. They take a 2-0 lead as we get into game number three, and it's really possible that this could be the last game of the series with how Greater Altoona have been playing and the struggles that Forest Hills have been reaching late into games. It's looking pretty good for Altoona. It really is. I mean, so far, if game one and two were not enough to make them look good, I don't know what Ooh. is, but Pay B is going to come in game number three here. says, all that momentum, you can shove it aside because I am here to take a goal right at the top of the top of the minute here, 20 seconds into this, we got four Hills going up by one. I know exactly what the doctor ordered for Forest Hills last game. They started things really well, but they couldn't quite end it well. But Pig B says, I'm just going to start it better. 2-0 was the same scoreline they held last game. The difference is it wasn't 24 seconds into the game. It was much later, but Pig B just decides that they will be in the lead. And so they are. Pigby has decided to take the game win. Exactly. As it will seem, he, he might have just turned on his monitor. <laughs> Taking two goals in a matter of 30 seconds, it is definitely possible that Pigby has gotten serious, but we'll find out if Altoona can bring this one right back. 30 seconds in, two goalies still very much intact here. Altoona flashes of brilliance, getting them back onto the offensive side. Square CU beats last man of the ball. It's a shot on target. Last man saves as a ball away, and Altoona fail to take that one goal take fail to recover from that 12 goal uh, two goal deficit yet still plenty of time to work with four minutes pig b once again up on the ball for preset a wave dash opportunity taken away sends it over to giving you hail though with position when there he is waiting puts it down pig b Ooh. the angle's pretty good the save however is even better yeah, and I, I'm honestly starting to believe what you said about Pigby turning on his monitor because he's been looking good all series, but this many shooting opportunities this quickly, either Greater Altoona are, have seen themselves at the cusp of victory and all of a sudden realize what it would mean and are starting to get nervous, or Pigby is just stepping into his own this game. Mortician Man able to save the next shooting opportunity, but Pigby already with six shots on goal could have been a seventh there, though not given credit for it as two for six. It's not the greatest conversion rate, but six goal, six shots on goal in a minute and 45 seconds is a fantastic amount and a wonderful performance from Pigby so far this game. So far so good, but can they maintain it? Because that's a pretty dangerous shot on target coming in from once again, the legendary Mortician Men. However, not going in yet. Not Mortician Men, there he is on the save. Ooh. Well, it, it looked like it was going to be a clear, but Mortician Men sends it straight onto the back of the net. I thought it was going to be a pass down to giving oh you hail, gosh. but it would seem like Mortician Men is just a little too good. Rather, Mr. Chimp, might I add, for the pass. But Mortician Men mm -hmm. takes that very first goal for Altoona CDC in only a one goal deficit now. Let's find out if Altoona can close this equalizer. Yeah, Altoona... They, they did the same thing last game. They were down 2-0, and they started and completed the comeback without letting up any goals. They are, however, really going to need to prevent any goals because they've only scored three goals in every single game this series, meaning that if it gets too far out of hand at the moment for Forest Hills, then it is reason to be concerned for Greater Altoona because you can make the comebacks, you know that, but you're going to need to not be at a, too wide of a deficit in order for that to be possibility. That obviously... Now, that much is obvious, rather, is you can't make a comeback if you're down by too many goals, and that's exactly what Forest Hills know, looking to make it as many goals as they can, but not able to force that one through. That's a good 50 coming in from Square CU. Mortician men with an even better doink. So keeping possession to themselves in the last two minutes is the name of the game here. Granted, they still need more and more boost to work with. Mortician men decides to wait this one out, goes off the ceiling, sends it down mid. So... Where CU does pick it up, but not accurate of a shot enough just yet. Mega Blaskin looking to clear this one. Mr. Chimp stops this one in the roots. And there's Big B 
Going up high, flip reset on his spells, getting the second one. Yes, he can. And that will be Pig B taking goal number two for Forest Hills. Pig B, it really is just the Pig B difference at the moment with just how many of these shots have been so mechanically intensive. And yet another one for Season 9 Supersonic Legend Pig B. A minute and 30 seconds as we stand at a 1 and 3 score line as the 1 and 3 in the timer aren't the only 1s and 3s on the scoreboard up ahead. However, time's expiring. It's counting down, and Altoona only really have the one goal to speak of. It might be an uncharacteristically slow game for them, and it could possibly be an avenue back into the series for Forest Hills. It definitely could be. Game number three here. Altoona <sighs> have been playing a phenomenal one, but Forest Hills have been bringing on the heat. Magician Man, here he is in the corner. A lot of boost to work with. Sends it over to Mr. Chim. That's a good beat, but Mega Plaskin gets a touch on it nonetheless. Square CU, there he is on the ball. No second touch. And that'll give Big B the space he needs to send it on to the other side. All they need to do is just wait this one out. 40 seconds and taking it two goals against a team like Altoona is not an easy task, but that's a pretty mm. good shot on target. And an even better save comes in from Big B. And it's always just even better, even better all game when you talk about Pig B. But also credit to the teammates as well, as giving you hail and the Mega Blaziken have been so consistent and solid all series long. Mortician Men, though, has kind of been trying to mirror Pig B all series. Through the first couple games, he was outscoring, but this game has been neutralized quite a lot more than he has been in games past. Only one goal for Mortician Men. Possibly could make it two at the very end here, but that will be denied as well. Much like everything else the Greater Altoona tried, aside from one goal, it was denied, and Forest Hills will deny the clean sweep as we do see our first game four of the day. It's not going to be another sweep on the TEC channel to end off the day. We know better than to end you guys off with three straight three zeros. Come on now. Well, Altoona CTC... <laughs> They were off to a great start here. Happy, might I add, I was actually expecting a 3-0 clean sweep to go through. But then I, you know, then I forget, remind, then I got reminded of a little somebody on Pig B who decided to just go berserk. Three goals, four assists to eight shots. Nothing too complicated. It is just this guy absolutely dominating the competition in a 3v3 matchup. Man has 2.5 times the second highest scorer. So I don't know what else you want me to tell you about Pig B. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, that is just what you got to say at the end of the day. For a player like Pig B to exist, you've got to have a, have a couple of pretty solid teammates enabling them. And that's exactly what we saw from Pig B. But at the same exact time, Altoona worked very well as an overall unit in games one and two. And as good as Pigby is, as talented as we saw them be in that last game, it's just we can't say for sure if that's going to be enough to beat such a talented full squad at Altoona. As yes, Blaziken and Hale are two very talented players as well. But when they've been winning, it's been largely due to Pigby simply intervening and saying, I would like to win now if that's okay with the other team. So it'll be up to Greater Altoona to step in and shut down Pigby. Be a total cohesive unit of a squad and really make the difference and possibly take the series for themselves. But they're going to need that confidence back they had in those first couple games. And it starts with a demo for Mr. Shimp and a shooting opportunity for Mortician. Just a lot of back and forth between these two teams here. We see Mortician Men now taking possession. That's the second touch to bring this ball down center square. CU needs to go back for this save. Has he made it back in time? Yes, he has. And the ball is going to back him back onto the other side here. Big B. Here he is on the ball. Beating one to that 50. Doesn't get the second. And that is Mega Blaskin not being able to get this ball through to the other side. Big B. Here he is. Got it over one now. Mortician Men needs to go for this dribble, and he needs to be pretty safe about this, which he is. But mm. how do you keep controlling the pace of this game here? Forest Hills usually have a huge task ahead of them, mm -hmm. and this one is not going to get any easier anytime soon. Oh, Pigby going for the bump play, but it does not work out. And Square CU able to meet Hale at the ball and challenge him well. As 3 minutes 50 seconds, Mortician Men able to get, get, get that save onto the shot, soft shot from Mega Blaziken. But that shot's just all the way through. 
Mortician Man just sends it right on net, says, eh, why not? Might as well just send a Hail Mary down the field. And it somehow travels the length of the pitch without being touched by a single Forest Hills defender as giving you hail so unbelievably close. He could practically taste that ball as it flew by, but there was nothing he could do to prevent the 1-0 lead for Altoona. Looking to make it to a square CU, oh but it's off the God. post. So unfortunate. It comes one side and then bounces out the other. And the post seemingly sent that one away. It was on pace to get through the net, but not allowed to. And Square CU unfortunately prevented from making the lead too. 90 seconds and that is still a one goal lead. Let's find out if they'll be able to get it going further. Altoona on the score on the save line here. Do manage to get one, but can they get the second? Mortician Man not quick enough. Forest Hills, however, are going to get that equalizer once again coming off of a pass from pig b and a shot from mega plaskin to get it <laughs> tied up again i will say i love the theming for mega blaziken the red car the fiery goal explosion the fire breathing dragon on the name tag it all just works so well and i also love that shot great opportunity set up by pig b but finished off by blaziken and now an opportunity to make good on the mistakes of their past for Forest Hills as they've tied things out back again. Also very fortunate that Square CU wasn't able to make it two to one earlier on, but now everybody's missed it. It's gone by Hale, it's gone by Blaziken, it's gone by Big B, and Mr. Chimp just scores off the back of just a pinch into the corner. That should never work at this situation. An unfortunate mistake from Forest Hills and it leaves them at a disadvantage once more. Well, once again, I would like to make it very clear to our viewers that Altoona need to win just one more game to get mm -hmm. the series win. And happy mm. with one game when you already have a one goal lead isn't that big of a deal. All oh, you need is to hold on out to it for just mm. one and a half game more. Ooh, Let's find ooh. out if they can make it happen. Two minutes and 30 seconds into this one. We'll see you. The combination of possession play Trying to get some shots in on target, but it's not going to be easy whatsoever. Yeah, and I, I mean, I just heard you say two minutes and 30 seconds, and I realized that I have completely forgotten about time. And not only that, but also, it, it's only halfway through this game. Like, it feels like this has been a marathon already, and we are still with two minutes left at least if, the, if it doesn't go to overtime. Absolutely being blessed, and it's seemingly time slowed down. Time flies when you're having fun, but this game is the perfect kind of rebuttal to that kind of a point because it's been a great time so far, but it feels like it's been going on forever. I wouldn't rather have it any other way as Mortician Men almost able to get a goal. Mr. Chimp looking for one as well. Flicks it past everybody except for Pig B, and they're not able to make the lead two again. Happy, what are we seeing here? Do we see a game five? Do we see them ending it in game four? There's so many questions and others right now. Game four might just be insane. might just seem like the likely idea. I'm I know better than to speak on what I expect to happen as every single time it's completely <laughs> spoiled the result of what ends up happening today. So fortunately, I'm gonna avoid. I'm gonna plead the fifth on that one and just experience the fun while it's still around. There's a minute left to go and, well, still a lead for Greater Altoona. Mortician men nearly able to make it more, but hail. Gets that save, has to bring it down to the other side as Square CU plays it well into the corner. Mortician Men still here to try and 50 50 Pig B. Does a really good job of it as well. Tries to catch Blaziken off, but it's not enough. 45 seconds left for Forest Hills to get one through. Oh, 45 seconds. Time is running out here for Forest Hills. If you want to head to the overtime, the time is now to make something happen. Let's find out if they're able to do so. Square CU, here he is on the ball, going off the ceiling now, but no shot opportunity just yet. Magician Man later to get out of his own half. Mm. Being able to do so, oh my god, that is dangerous. Magician mm. Man being able to get it out. Huge plays coming in on the defense. Pigby almost allowed to have another opportunity with the ball, but couldn't turn him around quick enough on it, so Square CU going to send it away. Five seconds left, Pigby going to send a shot on, but Square CU there. Blaziken, though, has an opportunity, just doesn't have any boost, so he'll just have to leave it high. Square CU able to follow things up well, but everybody scrambling underneath the ball. Pigby knocked away, the ball knocked down, and Altoona knocks Forest Hills down a peg as they're able to take the 3-1 series victory. 
and at the very least it's a game win for Forest Hills but coming in not having lost a single game and now losing three of them a disappointment to say the least but so excited must be the greater Altoona side as Mortician Men stands up tall has a fantastic performance and greater Altoona CTC are able to remain undefeated as they look to be the ones to replace Forest Hills atop the TEC League this season, this time around. Well, happy. <laughs> History has just been made. Forest Hills haven't been beaten in a series in quite a long time. As far as my goldfish memory goes back, but I assure <laughs> you, it's been a very long time. But that is Altoona CDC taking up a series against Forest Hills. I'm sure they're feeling proud of themselves, and deservedly so. Matician Man doing such a phenomenal job in getting that win for Altoona CTC. And of course, now, in this Division One standings, they are tied with California for mm. that 4-0 standing position you love to see it for us shields great games as all well. little tuna played just a little better this time that they did and i mean same goes for everybody we saw today you love to see the victories and unfortunately teams on the losing end all you can really do is take that loss with pride accept it look to try and figure out what you could have done better to fix that up for next week mm -hmm. which we will see more TEC action yet to come. The regular season is far from over, as action will continue next week. We had a couple of good series today, an unfortunate forfeit, a one that was uh, you know, not super close, one was kind of close, and then a <laughs> banger to end things off at the very end. And I loved that fine night, very nice little conclusion but that's all we have for today, as it is the conclusion after all. Thank you so much for tuning in for with us all day. My name has been Happy. Along with me once again is Flater. And we are so thankful for you to be here. And I'm, I'm excited to possibly watch next week. Maybe I'll be here. Who knows? You got to tune in to be there.